All right, the next part is if we can talk about the bell curve in the way of the center and then with the spread, we definitely can talk about all the different types of data sets. Like I mentioned previously, like, remember, the percentages never change, just the data do, right? <laughs> and so, but then how do we get it to a place where it's like, I'm not changing the X axis all the time. <laughs> like, it depends all on my data, you know, but how can I just standardize the normal distribution? We do this mostly to compare two different types of populations. For example, there was an example back in the statistics box plot um, section where we looked at two box plots from the salaries of construction workers and then teachers. How do we compare? So one of the ways was the box plot and visually, but another way is to be able to use the standardization and standardize what that salary and five, five number summary in the salary of construction workers means and bring it down to a uniform level where I could take salaries for teachers and bring it down to a uniform and then just compare the distributions. So this is called the Z-score. A Z-score will standardize your data in which then allows us to compare distributions. So um, let me go ahead and write that down. So the Z-scores are good for comparing or measuring different distributions. So we just want to be able to standardize our data in a way, in a sense where we could just compare different distributions to each other and also be able to not always depend on the data for the percent, just always be able to standardize no matter what the data is. So for example, if you have a test score um, out in a statistics class um, that the mean of the test scores was 82 and standard deviation was seven. If a grade A is 93 points, what is the Z score for an A on the test? So the Z score is, again, standardizing a data point so that we're able to compare different distributions. So again, we want to standardize the normal distribution, but in that with the X axis, we have the tick marks and the Z score allows that us to identify and standardize a particular observation in our data set and bring it down to that level where we could compare distributions. So what we do need, notice we need everything. We need our value of observation, our mean and standard deviation. So the Z-score is a very simple calculation. It's just understanding what we're doing with them. And again, a Z-score is just, again, standardizing. That's what we call it. We use the standard deviation, right? We standardize a particular observation in our data so that we can later on compare to different types of distributions. So if I just wanted to easily apply the formula here, I do know that the mean is 82, the standard deviation is seven, and the value of observation is 93. So it's just gonna be a really quick plug and chug. So Z will be equal to X, which is 93, minus the mean 82, all divided by the standard deviation. And you can easily just go to your calculator and put it in parentheses 93 minus 82 divided by seven. And we usually round to the hundredths place. So we could see here the hundredths place or two decimal places. The test digit is one, so it's 1.57. And that's all there is to it. And so let me make a note over here. So round Z scores to two decimal places, and that's on purpose. That is intentional, and we'll see why a little later. And then um, notice that here, the Z-score is positive in this case. 
And that means they, when the z-score is positive in this case, this means a student was above average. Don't forget that bell curve, right? That middle bell curve here is the mean, right? Which is equal to the median. So if they're on the positive end, that means they're above average. That means that z-score lies on the right. So what does that mean to the left? Well, that means that the z-score is uh, negative and they did below average. So whatever that average is, so in this case, the average is 82. So that means that if a student got, uh, if we calculated the z-score for a student's particular score and it was positive, we know that they did above average, meaning they had a score of above 82. If a student, if we calculated a z-score and it was negative, we knew the student um, earned a score below average and therefore it was below 82. So that's kind of where the z-score, we're going to learn more about that in a little bit. So here's an example where we want to compare distribution. So Pat took midterms and she had, she took a statistics course, a biology and a kayaking midterm. And for each class, they tell you the grade, you know, 82 under statistics, and they give you the mean and standard deviation. So for biology, she received 72, but the mean was 65 and standard deviation was 10. Kayaking, it looked like she did really well, because the but the average was 88 and 6. So notice, like, she did really well in kayaking, but notice, look at the average. The average was pretty high anyways. Whereas on her bio exam, she scored the lowest out of the three, but yet look at the mean. The mean was 65, so she did score above average, right? So um, we're going to go ahead, and the only way we're going to truly be able to find meaningful results in seeing which exam she did relatively better is to find the z-score for each so that we can compare which exam Pat really did better on. So let's go ahead and do that. We're, we're going to calculate a z-score three times, right? So here's um, for her stats. So the mean was 74, and the standard deviation is 12, and the value, which is her score, was 82. So this means the um, z-score for her stats. So I use subscript s for a stats, s for stats, I guess and did 82 minus 74, and then divide by the standard deviation of 12. So you could go to your just calculate, put a parenthesis, and just do it. I would not put too much work into it, because our goal is to get the z-score and compare her other midterms, not necessarily arithmetic. Once again, we want to round, again, to two decimal places, as mentioned before. So notice 6 is the test digit, so we're going to have 0.92. It is positive, though, so we assume she did do um, above average. Let's see, for her bio exam. The bio exam's mean was 65, and the standard deviation was 10, and her score was 72. So the z-score for the bio exam was equal to the x, 72 minus the mean, all over 10. And once again, I'm just going to go to my calculator and I'm not going to think about it. I'm way too busy to do a little arithmetic. <laughs> and so we have 0.7 exactly, which is awesome. We didn't have to round. Okay, and then um, kayaking. So the mean is equal to 88 for the kayaking, and the standard deviation is 6, and the x value is 91. So the z-score for the kayaking will just be the 91 minus the mean, 88, over the standard deviation of 6. So there wasn't a lot of spread there in the kayaking exam. And it sounds like a really fun class, too. <laughs> Pat was very lucky to have taken it. 
and then we get 0.5. So now if I look at this, let me put these all on a little number line. So here's z equals zero, okay? Z equals zero, that's usually where the average lies. Okay. So where does her biology exam, so here, let me go ahead and put the tick marks. Here's one and two. Here's equal one and z equal two. And then maybe I'll just do this for argument's sake, z equal negative one and z equal negative two. So she lies here, let me do a red, uh, 0.92, so maybe over here. And then um, 0.7 for her bio. And then 0.5, which is pretty close to there, for the kayaking. So now look at those three dots. Which dot is farthest to the right or the most positive? we would see the stats, right? So we would say since Pat's Z-score for her stat exam is 0.92, she did, rel she did relatively better on that exam out of the three. So when you want to compare distributions, that's what you do. You go ahead and you take the three distributions, find the z-score for the value that you want to observe in your data, and then determine, you know, kind of put them on a number line and see which is the farthest negative or the farthest positive. We could see that with the kayaking exam, we assumed it was going to be that because she scored an A, the mean was already high, but notice because the mean and standard deviation wasn't too far from each other, that that had the smallest Z-score out of the three because in stats, the um, mean was 74 and she did much farther from the mean in a positive direction. And that standard, if that spread was larger, it became the largest Z-score. But at least now we can rewrite these data values in a standardized way where we just kind of look and compare it. Oh yeah, boom, right there. We don't have to like say, well, the kayaking this and that. We just calculate the Z-score and then we can compare.